Welcome back everybody. It's good to have you to another real estate market update for the Milwaukee metro area, this time April 2024. So the big topic for today is obviously prices. We have to talk about real estate prices. The market has significantly accelerated in the last few weeks. If you've been out there, it's been very, very palatable and buyers have been pushing prices up to new record heights. I have the aggregate numbers for you, but we have also analyzed every single transaction that has closed in the last 30 days. I'm sure by now you've heard that a lot of people are making offers over list price, but you might be wondering how much exactly are some people still able to negotiate a discount and what are the dollar amounts. So I have to break down for you today. Then we're also going to take a look at uh, what's new with the economy. We have some news from uh, the inflation front, uh, some good news, some really bad news, and what that is going to mean for the rest of the year and for the housing market. And then finally, we want to talk a little bit about the chronic housing shortage that we have also in the rental space in Milwaukee. I have some numbers for you and what that is going to mean uh, for the housing market. That's our last topic for today. I think that wraps it about up. Let's get started with uh, the latest numbers straight out of the MLS. As always, I like to start uh, looking at inventory. That is the most important number when you look at a marketplace because the forces of, of supply and demand, when they come together, the net result of that is inventory. We all remember what happened to toilet paper inventory when demand was really high and supply couldn't keep up a few years ago. It's not much different in the real estate market. And we're just seeing that there is a lot more demand than there is supply. And the result is very low inventory. The units that come on the market don't last very long. They go very quickly. But we're seeing a plus here, uh, plus 31.8 percent. We have now 2,500, a little over 2,500 units. So inventory has been increasing, but from a very, very low number. And it's still very low. You can see this easily when you compare it below with March of 2019. It used to be 5,000 or in March of 2015 when we still had a balanced market that was 11,000 units. So we, we're now at about a quarter of inventory what we had back then. So that puts it a little bit in perspective. We needed more inventory. Hopefully there's still a little bit more to come, um, but we're, we're going in the right direction. Uh, sold units, not much news there. That's basically flat, about 1500. We're still uh, shy 500 from where we should be. Eight days on market. That has been a landslide change from last month. I think we were already 25 or 26 days on market last month. Now we're down to eight. So that is that rapid acceleration of the market I've, that I've been talking about. We're out of the winter market and max square middle in the spring market. Now we're at eight days. I would not be surprised if next month we will see six or even uh, five days on market. So below you have the historic numbers. So that is extremely fast. And of course, that has an impact on prices. And we're now at uh, 319,800 for the median home. And that's up 11.4% compared to last year this time around. Now, if you look back before COVID 2019, we have gained about $120,000 since then. And all the way nine years back to 2015, uh, prices have pretty much doubled in the last nine years here in Milwaukee. Market trends. The spring market has been heating up very, very fast. We have seen it with the buyers that we're working with. We've also seen it with our listings so far. Uh, we've always gotten multiple offers on every single listing, um, so anywhere between three, five and over 10 offers. And we see very creative offer writing. So a lot of people are trying different things to get their offer to the top of the pile and get it accepted. And we're seeing quite interesting strategies there and, and relatively high prices, but it's not evenly distributed across all the price ranges. So the market between 200 and 300, 200 to 400 thousand dollars is really the most competitive one. And you will see this when I uh, share the breakdown with you very clearly. So here we have every single transaction from the last 30 days here locally. And um, we have here the different price ranges. So this starts at 100,000, 200, 300, half a million here, and then all the way up to $1 million houses. And then you can see how much people have paid over. That's 10,000, 20, 30, up to 50,000 here. I cut it off. There were a few that went a little higher than that. And then also minus 10, minus 20,000. So this is when people were able to negotiate. So there's a couple of interesting things going on. First of all, you can see a lot of these dots are right on the line. So it is very common that houses of all price ranges are selling just right for list price. That's one thing. 
you also see there is, despite all the demand and the craziness that's going on in the market, there is quite a few that were actually able to negotiate substantial discounts. And that's usually a situation where you, when you do not have multiple offers or you're playing a really good angle you can still get a discount negotiated but in many cases you see that prices were above and when i um, break that up a little bit you see mostly in this box so this is from 200 to about 450 you can say this is where most of the aggressive offers are happening interestingly enough when you go to higher price ranges you see the dollar numbers are coming down and that's also really interesting when you look at it in a percentage range and we can also you know segment that a little bit and you can look here at 200 to 300,000 that's up to 18% so a lot of the dots are here in the 10% space but there's quite a bit that goes all the way up to 18 and then you get about 15 about 10% here that's the 400 to 500 and then over half a million uh it gets down lower so the big question is always what should you be offering you're looking at a house the question is how much should i offer on on that house there's two different scenarios um, I think it's okay if you uh, if you estimate too low and you come in with a low ball offer and you didn't get it, the damage is not that great. Um, the other problem is when you're going into high, when you think it is going to be competitive and you are offering 30,000 over list price and then there's five other offers and they're all at list price or less. You will, you will never know because you will never see what the other offers are. But when we're listing properties, we see all the offers obviously and you know that's that's a position that you don't want to be in when you're the only when you're an outlier that's way above what everybody else is offering i actually have made a video about this um uh, that i posted i think about a week ago it's called how do you know how much to offer on a house and i'll put a link somewhere here if you want to go back and take a look at it on that note uh, there's a lot more information you can get on our website so we have a buyer's guide there that's filled with all the details. It's specifically, I've specifically written it for the Milwaukee market. It breaks down the process on how it works if you're first time home buyer, how you're buying a home, and then also what are the different ways how you can get a competitive edge. Uh, in the market, our job is usually to tell you the reasons why you should not buy a particular house. I've never been able to talk anybody out of buying a house. If you love a house, then by all means go for it, but at least I want you to know what's wrong with it or what my concerns are. And similar, we also have a seller guide. So if you're interested in those things, you can go on onpoint.com, onpointrg.com and download it from our website. You can also request access to the MLS there. I'm happy to set up an MLS portal for you. And with that, let's go back and take a look at the market. So you are probably familiar with the game of musical chairs, and that is a really good analogy to what's going on in the real estate market. We have seen that increasingly be the case over the last years, the last three years in, in particular, and this year is shaping up um, to be no different. The only issue is that we have a lot less inventory than we have chairs in that picture. So depending on who you ask, you get different estimates, but most agents are estimating that there is around five to six buyers for every seller that we have. So that gives you a little bit uh, of a visual of what that situation is and how that is working. And it is not only limited to the purchase market. It, we also see a similar thing in the rental market. Take a look at the top 20 most competitive rental markets. Milwaukee happens to be here number two, right behind Miami and ahead of New Jersey, ahead of Chicago. And then we have Grand Rapids and a few other interesting markets. And there are nine prospective renters for every apartment that's listed. The renewal rate is very high, 72% and then the share of new units is only half a percent so this goes to speak to two things number one we're not building enough new units if it's only half a percent the other thing is this creating uh, is creating upwards pressure on rents so we are expecting rents to go up this year uh, even more and that also creates more of an incentive for people to get out of a rental situation uh, a lot of first-time home buyers have been renting for 10 years they spent an aggregate maybe 100 150 200 thousand dollars on rent and that is getting uh, to the point where they say no more we really want to buy a house so that's what's going on there let's take a look at uh, the economy on wednesday we got new data from inflation consumer price index uh, ticked up again 3.5 percent now uh, last month we were at 3.2 so we're somewhere here in that uh, lower three percent range for the last 
um, three quarters of a year. The Fed is trying to get us back here into the 2% range. That is their goal. It doesn't look like we're getting there anytime soon. But what I'm sure you're aware is you have seen gas prices going up and we already discussed home prices and rent prices going up. And the problem that uh, the concern that I have with that is when you look at what is uh, going into the consumer price index, uh, a lot of it is actually housing. So this is rents and also purchases and the cost of housing has gone up. And with the shortage that we have, there's not really much of a, a relief inside across the country. So this is not specific an issue that we have in Wisconsin or Milwaukee. This is across the country. Home prices are going up. Rents are going up. You've seen that before across the nation. Very, very competitive. And then the second biggest segment is transportation. And that's, of course, where the fuel prices are hitting. So gas prices are going up from, from what I know every year in spring. Spring and summer is traveling season. A lot of people make a road trip. My hopes that we see either gas prices or rent prices or home prices going down in the next few months are close to zero or probably below zero. So that is not going to happen. And that means because this makes up such a big portion of inflation of the consumer price index, uh, I am very much prepared that we are going to continue to stay above that 3% range and we are not dropping down to uh, the 2% what the Fed uh, is targeting. Uh, early in the year, the Fed has said we're going to lower rates uh, probably three times this year. That was in January, February. Um, and the market has actually expected between five and seven rate cuts for this year. And now the Fed is back paddling on this one. And I don't think we're going to see a rate cut in June. Um, and I'm very skeptical if the Fed is going to touch rates so close before the presidential election. So in my book, this is probably going to uh, push back a little later uh, towards the end of the year if we're going to see it. Um, rates, of course, have a really impact on buyer demand. So um, here's a chart uh, that's based on surveys that shows you how buyer demand is impacted on mortgage rates on top. We're in the red area, so buyer demand is weak. Believe it or not, that's where we are right now. Um, if you go below 7%, so this is the 7% cutoff here, then we have limited buyer demand. If we go below 6.5%, we were there briefly uh, beginning of the year. We have seen that buyer demand picks up right away. And then if we go below the magic six, so 599 will actually do it. Um, we're expecting the floodgates to open it. A lot of the people coming back into the market that uh, put their home search on pause because they deemed rates too high. Uh, the Mortgage Banker Association, they're putting out their forecast. And I put uh, in here a green line. You can see this is the 6% the line here. So it looks like we're right now here. It looks like for the rest of the year, the trend might be going downward. So the Mortgage Bank Association is expecting it to go down, but we are not going to see rates below 6% uh, before the end of the year or even next year in 2025. Uh, nobody knows accurately when rates are going to change. You can see that even the Fed, you know, three months ago or two months ago, they said they will cut rates several times this year. Now we have new economic data. We had a lot of job growth. Uh, the GDP has been exceptionally good last quarter, 3.2%. So there's good news there. Um, and we have an economy that's really still running hot despite the high interest rates. So I think we have to get used to rates might be staying a little higher for a little longer, uh, possibly towards the end of the year before we see a meaningful change. So my advice is always, you know, buy the house that's right for you. Make sure you're not house poor so you can comfortably afford that budget at the current rate, but don't wait for rates to drop because you can always refinance when that happens, but you don't want to be competing with other buyers when everybody and their brother is trying to buy a house because rates are dropping finally to 599 or less. All right, there's good news too, I promised you. And the good news is coming actually from wages. So you have here a 20 year chart and uh, that's kind of showing wage growth over time. All right, plus 5.9 in March, so that is good news. And what is particular about this, we are seeing the rate of which wages are going up twice as fast as inflation is going up. So if you assume inflation being around three, three and a half percent, and we're seeing wages going up to the tune of 6%, that means that, that is a net gain for workers. They're slowly gaining the purchase power back. Um, and of course, everybody's getting used to the higher prices, but then also income is growing with that. And that will help with the affordability nationwide and also here locally, of course. But the bad news is this doesn't happen overnight. So you need to let this play out, not over a few months. You need to you know, let this play out over a few years before you see a, main, a meaningful impact that people are, are gaining an advantage over the inflation rate. 
Now, um, in terms of how this impacts home prices, here is something that I want to share with you. And this is how home prices have changed over time. Now, I have here a number of comparisons for you, and I want to start out with one that I, I have not shown you in the past because I think it's a maybe a little bit ridiculous to compare Milwaukee, that's the purple one on the bottom, with East Coast and West Coast. In blue, we have your Boston and then San Jose in California, that's green on top. Uh, and you would be right, of course, we cannot compare Milwaukee with those markets, but I want you to understand that Milwaukee prices in relation to these markets are a fraction. So you can buy th three to five houses in Milwaukee for what a house will cost you in those markets, not 10% more, but three to five houses. And so that, of course, is making a lot of people think that live in these very high cost of living areas to say, well, I work remotely, I work on my laptop, you know, do I really need to buy a house in Boston or maybe I should move to the Midwest and to start looking at, at Midwest markets. So I think over the next five to 10 years, we are going to see an adjustment there. I think prices are going to equalize out across the US. We have right now such a dynamic spread between the high priced markets and the low priced markets that is going to balance out. Um, let's take a look at something that is a little bit more realistic. I always like comparing Milwaukee to the national average. We have a Milwaukee in green and the national average in red. And when you travel a little bit, I don't think there's a really good reason why Milwaukee real estate should be priced so much below the national average. I think Milwaukee is actually a pretty cool city. A lot of um, people that move here to Milwaukee tell me the same thing. A lot of times they tell me they have been visiting here a year or two and they really thought it was cool and you know they're comparing it wherever they're coming from. And, um, and they really like Milwaukee. So you know, I can't find a good tangible reason why Milwaukee real estate should be discounted compared to the national average. And I think that is going to change over the next uh, decade or so. Now we don't have to look out of state. Here's a comparison, uh, just throwing Madison in here. So we, we see people from Chicago move here. We see people from Madison move here just because uh, of the difference. So that's quite substantial. Uh, how much more you have to pay even in a market like Madison that's just two hours from here. All right, what's the outlook for the next uh, few uh, weeks and couple months? Rates will probably stay in uh, the upper sixes, maybe around 7%. Um, so, you know, we were, we were hoping, we were thinking, we were, everybody was expecting that rates would go down. The Fed is changing course. The economy is still running too hot. We'll continue to keep an eye on it but uh, rates are for the for the foreseeable future what they are at least at the moment we don't see rates going up so that's kind of a good news uh, spring inventory will increase slightly i don't think we're going to see more than 3000 units on the market remember before covid we had 5000 so it's going to stay very constricted but we're going to see a little more so that's uh, much needed and we're seeing a few more choices. The market will continue to heat up in the next weeks based on what the, on the momentum that we already see in the market. Uh, but on the other side, the high interest rates make buyers very selective. So buyers are not loose with their money. They will compete as hard as they have to for your listing, but don't make the mistake to think that you can grossly overprice it and buyers will still come because those are the listings that are sitting on the market and then in some incidences we're able uh, to negotiate very substantial discounts. So when you bring your house on the market, my job is always to help you understand how much your house is realistically worth and then we have to you know, get the condition right, we have to prepare it. Sometimes I have to talk people out of making extensive repairs because the return on investment is just not there. So usually we just stick to cleaning, painting and staging and make it look really good um, and then price it appropriately for what it is the market will do the rest. If you have any questions for me, you have my email address below. A lot of people reach out to me with an email after they've been watching some of my videos. Always happy to answer those. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next month.